The Bible tells us that we have not because we ask not. So we ask today that our joy and your joy may be full. Support Worship Center Radio by going to www.worshipcenterradio.net and on the right side, click the Donate Now area. Send your love offering that we may continue to broadcast throughout the world and to bring you programming that elevates you to the next level in God. We have put the Great Commission given to us by our Lord Jesus in action. We thank you in advance for your financial support. Christ our Lord is risen. We're no longer signs and wonders truly the word tells us that miracle signs and wonders follow those that believe we are believers in the house today i am dr Rhoda bird this is the esther project our very last day of the three days of fasting and praying we've had some awesome awesome speakers teachers you want to go back uh-oh <laughs> the producer bring it out all right bring it back okay <laughs> you can't see why i'm waving in the back he's trying to orchestrate how i'm supposed to do this you think i would know how to do it by now we've done it for a couple of days but anyway i think we're okay sound check is good so three days of fasting and praying uh the esther project and we've had some awesome uh teachers and just wonderful things you want to go back on the live stream and view it uh but first of all i want to say hi to everybody so hello to those that are listening through worship center radio detroit hello to those that are watching on the Ustream. hello to those that are viewing through our website twcn.faith which is our television network hello to those that are on live stream live stream you are uh, the bomb i'm so grateful for all of those who had tuned in through live stream first monday we had 17,000. yesterday we had 23,000. thank you thank you for your support we give a shout out to the live stream team that has been on top of making sure this was marketed properly thank you uh i want to give a shout out to juan johnson who is our production manager here on the radio and the audio and the video and all that other good stuff and just every everybody we give a shout out to the mother of my guest speaker which is apostle sharice lewis she happens to have a program on worship center radio matter of fact she come up she comes on at three you don't want to miss her okay she may not be on live stream but at three o'clock she will be on worship center radio you talking about a firebomb oh my goodness check out her periscope too she does tea time with the apostle awesome messages fun stuff she's funny she's fun she's anointed and I'm telling you, she don't like the devil, and he don't like her. That's a good thing. <laughs> we don't want to be friends with the enemy. Ain't that right. right? So the song that you just heard uh, was Miracle Signs and Wonders by none other than Youth Pastor Rudy of Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries. Did I get yeah, that right? I right. practiced last night, so I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> so uh, also, uh, you can find out more about uh, Pastor Rudy's uh, life uh, through his bio on WPK. Is it what is 
Yeah, WPKMinistries.org. WPKMinistries.org. Go check it out. You'll learn more about the Apostle, us, woman of God. There's a lot of things going on at Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom. I'm telling you, you want to, if you in the Lincoln Park area, or if you just in the state of Michigan, period, go check out that church. That's a place where yeah. you will be loved, where you will be appreciated, and if the devil is on your back, before you leave that church, he coming off of you. You hear That's me? Because right. I know. Because I've been there, okay? And this woman of God has been operating ministry for years. She didn't just start with the deliverance. She's been doing it for years. And the reason why I'm talking about her, because the Bible said to let another man praise your work. She ain't going to say it, but I'm going to say it, okay? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to build one another up, lift up, uh, one another up, not tear each other down, okay? Right. We are part of the body of Christ. What I don't have, she got. What she don't have, somebody else got. But we all work together. We fitly join together. And I'm mentioning her because in pure it was a time of deliverance if you need some deliverance i want you to go to worldwide prophetic kingdom you hear me the what's the email again i mean not uh, the email the website the website www. I mean, yeah, <laughs> WPKMinistries.org. You okay? You heard it. You heard it right here. Yeah. Worship Center Radio and TWCN.Faith. She's coming on our network. She's already, like I said, uh, um, on, it, uh, it, what is it? It's Kingdom Vision, right? Yep. Kingdom, Kingdom Vision, Vision at 3 o'clock. She's already on Worship Center Radio, but she's coming on TWCN.Faith Network as well. All right, so we talked a little bit about her. Go find out more about her or, or stay tuned after this to watch our show, okay? Not watch our show, program, I'm sorry. So I want to talk about this wonderful young man that called me auntie. Yep. Hey. <laughs> it's a blessing to have Always. you. I've been excited, waiting all week to have you. Yeah. Uh, we did a, oh, you know what? We did a... Uh, concert launch for you. Matter of fact, yeah. it's on live stream. It's recorded. Yeah. So you can go back and review the concert and hear all this great music. You can also uh, a Kingdom Vision did a, a conference yeah. and we also live street that conference. It is recorded yeah. and you can go in live stream and visit and watch the program all over again. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it like we did putting it together. Amen. Youth Pastor Rudy is a miracle sign and wonder. Yeah. Is that God right? Is good. Yes. Okay, so we're going to tell a little bit of testimony and then we're going to get into what miracles. Matter of fact, let's start with this. What is a miracle sign and wonder to you? Well, a miracle sign and wonder to me is when God moves and when it's unexpected or when when you might have planned something out and things shift or when things come your way and it seems like all is against you and the opposition just fails to work against you. So miracle signs and wonders uh, work within the faith and the mind of the believer. That's powerful, Rudy. That's so powerful. Talk to me about this song. How did you, How what inspired you to write and produce the song Miracle Sign of Wonder? You all going to hear some more of his music today too. But what, what, what encouraged you to do that? What inspired you? Well, what really happened was I was, I was, at home and no actually we were at church we were in worship and pastor had been saying you know she see miracle signs and wonders miracle signs and wonders happening and coming so what i began to do was pick up on the messages that she would preach and i would take those certain things out of the messages and reform them into a song Mm. But when I made the song, uh, it was it was from the heart because I needed a miracle. I needed a sign and I needed a wonder. It was at a time in my life where I was going through when my parents were going through the divorce and I was acting out in school. I was pulling back from God and I was wanting more of all the positive things that was bestowed unto me. I say bestowed unto me because when I was growing up, my mom used to make me read this poster that me and her wrote out. You know, uh, I am what you created me to be, a man of God with the mind of Christ. 
I will focus. I will be faithful. I will stay planted in the word and just different things like that and so on and so forth because it got real detail with everything that I'm doing even now. So like when I made it, it was just a cry for help because I really, I was going through hell. And, wow. And I needed a, I needed a way to find that heaven that we all look to live in one point in our life, you know, so. Now, your mom said that, you know, something else transpired uh, during the time of divorce or after the divorce. What happened to you? Well, it was, I think it, she might have been talking about, um, okay, a few things actually happened, <laughs> actually, because it was, it was like a, a huge transition for me because I went from a public school to home school, one, and um, two, spiritually, what I know happened was I was elevated. And um, through the transitions, I had to get alone to find who I was because I was going to a school where it was 35 students in a class and I wasn't focused. So I had left that schooling and went online where I'm home alone or I'm, I'm at the church and I'm doing my schoolwork. But when I got alone, I had no choice but to go to God because that's all we did. When we went to church, we spent time at the church all day, all night, all night prayers, every night. It was kind of like that. So, like, for me, I really saw who I was and who I needed to become. So when I stepped into it, the transitions began to happen then. Um, I began to get more involved in ministry. I was supporting my mother because it was a new ministry. After the divorce had happened, my mother had acted in, in the ministry that God had created for her to do. So I supported that purpose, and I found my purpose in that. Awesome, awesome. And then it was you had an aneurysm, and you were hospitalized. Yep. Yeah, and okay. So going down that line, um, I started youth ministry when I was in like 16, and then uh, a few years later, I just turned 18 on February 2nd then, and uh, I had to finish up school. I had to end up getting my GD or whatever, and right after I took the test, April 14th, on a Sunday, we were in worship. And I was playing the drums. We were going into the last song. And the next thing I know, I felt this migraine headache. And it began to move all over my head. Uh, I stopped. I jumped up. I told the security something ain't right. I'm going to the back. I proceeded to go to the back. And even then, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but even then when I was going to the back and I thought, I was back there with security, but the door had shut. So when, like, how it was set up, the door was, like, right here, and it was steps, like, a few feet following that door. I had fell forward when the door had shut. Something grabbed me. I thought it was somebody. Well, yeah, somebody grabbed me and held me carried me down the steps and laid me on the ground. When I looked over and I saw the exit door, all I seen was a long white robe. And I opened the door and there was security. So, I mean, I believe that that was an angel. I'm not going to front or anything. And when I uh, went through this situation, I ended up in the hospital for three weeks. Uh, God really moved. Muslims was giving their life to Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, it was it was testimony after testimony. Then I, I had now, nothing to now, tell. What made them give their life to Christ? They seen the love. They mm. seen the faith. They seen the appreciation that a fellow Christian brother and sister had for me and even the youth. Because we had 
posters. They had posters in my room of different things that I have done. And then the youth had signed these cards and they had videos of them praying for me. And the nurses would see them. They're like, what is that? What, what's going on? So what do you do? And it was like, are you an artist or anything? And I was like, no, not yet, but I'm working on it. And <laughs> I'm a youth pastor. And he was like, what? And so a lot of the times they really didn't ask questions, but they, they were in the midst of of my circle and the people that were around and all the things that were said in the room when I was there was positive things, godly things, because we couldn't have a wink link in that room. Come on. You can't have a wink link in the camp. You, can't. you better say that. You can't all have right. a wink link in the camp. Right. You cannot. See, when you you got to stand in belief. Yep. See, when you are in opposition and when you're going through something, you have to remember that. You might not be able to carry the weight, but the people around you have to be able to. It's not about um, uh, it's not about being strong when someone is weak. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is being girded up. See, because when you're girded up, a surprise is not a surprise. Mm. To you, it's an attack, and it's an onslaught, and you're going to remove it. You're going to take care of it. You're going to cover the people that you have with you. So it's kind of like that. You know, moving in that manner allow them to see the message that they needed to see. When you take out the negative in the room, the message is clear. Woo! Come on! Yay! Like yeah, 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 yeah. The message like is clear. I need you to get with this. Get with it. He's saying when you remove the negative among you, get rid of the naysayers. You got to get them out of your ear. They got victory by unity. They meaning Esther. She fasted and prayed with her handmaidens, Mordecai and the rest of the city, and Shushan. They got together, those that were Jews. They came together and they prayed. They were in one accord. They were in unison. And they had to walk in faith. And when you need what what you needed your miracle, you hooked up with like-minded people. people. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. I I mean it. It was just the the unique thing about it was like a lot of the times when you take out the negative, confusion goes, drama mm -hmm. goes, worry goes, and so then you have a goal and you have that focus. If you're not strong enough to reach it, the people around you will, and they'll carry you through it. Ecclesiastics talk about that, that uh, two have a better reward for their labor, because if one falls, the other can lift them up. That's right. Come on, that's the word. Uh, I want to say Ecclesiastic 9. I'm not sure I'm going to look it up, though. But yeah, so it's we're helpers one to another. Even Jesus said in my about twos, yeah. where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. I was just about to say Ah, he touch two, touch and agree on anything. That's right. And and you know what? You got it. It's, it's important to have the Holy Spirit. All right. The Holy Ghost. Okay. It's important to have the tongues. If you don't have it, you can get it. And And the crazy thing is I believe that it can happen right here, right now. The, the problem is we're so focused on the world that is around us. But when you think about God, he created everything, but yet he still focuses on you. In the middle of all the things that are going on, he's not looking at that. He's looking at you. Mm. So you have to remember that God is focusing on you and you need to focus on yourself. That's what I had to learn. When I was in the hospital for three weeks, I stopped looking at everything else. The first, the first week, I really was limited to do a lot. You know, I had the catheter in. I had two coils uh, uh, draining blood and spinal fluid out. I was even on life support at some point when it first began. And... What I realized was that I cannot look at anything else right now. I need to look at what God is saying to me, and I need to look at what I need to do, and that was heal. That was focus on my recovery. That was focus on helping and just staying faithful. Yes. Full oh, of faith. That's awesome. So what were some of the things the doctor said you couldn't do that you could do now? Walk. Talk. Wow. Uh, remember. Uh, speak, understand. What else? 
it was just, they even said some really off the wall. I would have a headache for six months. Are you experienced any of that? No. <laughs> no. No. But God, you had a but God moment. Yeah, nothing but God. <laughs> he came in and did what he do, and he do it well. I'm telling you, I'm telling That's you, ain't nobody God. like him. Nobody. That is our God. Woo! Bible says he's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. I love blowing up kisses. <laughs> Woo! I just love him. He's so sweet. I'm telling you, <laughs> the, the, the wisdom and the peace comes in when you have faith. Uh, true understanding comes in when you have faith. And when you have faith, you're willing to help people even in your misunderstanding. God will send knowledge through you just by witnessing, and you will be learning things as you teach. I actually, before I even finish that statement, I will say this. I would not want to be in a classroom with a teacher that is teaching me something and they're still not learning. Mm, wow. So you always have to stay humble, uh, be open, and you won't fall. You won't you won't have a hindrance. You won't have a setback. And see, the situation, I, I say, because a lot of people might say, you know, the devil is a lie and, and this and that and, and the third. But guess what? When my mother and the people that were interceding were praying, God spoke to them and said, he's going to be okay. So from there, it let me know that it's something that I have done or it's something that I wasn't doing. It was something that I wasn't hearing. It mm -hmm. was something that I wasn't watching for me to be in that position. I believe when we end up in a hospital and we're limited to things that we normally would do in our daily life or we're incarcerated, that God is speaking or he's trying to show you something and you have either been disobedient, you've been ignoring him, or you've been blind to the fact of what he's trying to show you. So for those who are running right now, I want you to stop where you are. Because when you get a warning, a verbal warning, the action starts to happen. And I'm not saying this to scare you, but I'm saying this to get in line. Get in line. Esther be Esther. King, find your Esther. Be patient and, and allow God to move because there's so many things going on and you can be easily distracted right now. But if you just stop and think about how valuable your life is to yourself, not to God right now, to yourself. We're talking about you because this is so much that you need to do in this life. And you have to realize that you are important to you and that you love yourself enough to stop the mess, to stop the addiction, to stop the bad relationship that you're in so that you can receive the success that you've always dreamed of. See, I think that the problems that we have as people is that we want so much for ourselves in the middle of our mess that we still decide in that wanting we get so comfortable that we don't change. Mm. You know, the funny thing, I, I'm, I'm not too, 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 too familiar with Esther, but I do remember her seeing the situation and wanting to change herself so she can be seen. She went through the purification. You talking about the 12 months? Yeah. Six months of she? myrrh and spices and another six months of, yeah, prep, she went through t uh, 12 months of preparation. Right. Mm -hmm. So so when you when you realize the... She went through the process. She was willing to go through the process yeah. to become what she needs to be yeah. for the king. See? And, and even in that, we have to realize that things don't come overnight. Guess what? The things that come overnight go away, go away as quick as they come. Especially those that God didn't send. Cause he can do a suddenly he can do a suddenly miracle. That's but right. But there are things that the enemy sent too that has nothing to do with godly things. You're you absolutely it. right. I, I could tell you to have miracle signs and wonders happening in your life, you have to clean your house. Come on. Clean your house. Uh, the 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 scripture says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. So clean your house. 
it's it's too much in your house. What I'm saying is, it's too much furniture. It's too many I- idols in your room. It's too much where it's clouding your space. Physically, mentally, and emotionally. You got too much going on in your life. Clear it out. And then allow God to be God. You know, I, I think, you know, we have different issues that we do according to each process. We, uh, we clean the house, but we get impatient. And we start trying to be God. Just because you clean your house does not mean you go and buy new things. What I mean, that means you don't go get new girlfriend after you just got rid of the one that was not your wife. That means that you don't go and, and you go hang out when you just got sober. You, you don't go to the club. You don't go to the bar when you just got sober. That means when you just got out of slinging rocks, slinging dope, you don't go back to the corner. You don't meet up with the same group of kids, the same group of people. You don't. That means when you just got out of janky business, when people was ripping you off, you don't call them up for another deal. No. Cut it off and then be patient. God will not give you anything you cannot bear. You are in a position of being cleaned. So allow him to clean you so that he could bring pure miracles, pure signs, and pure wonders. That will take you from A to B in a week. The Bible says that uh, he is the supplier of all of our needs according to his riches and glory, Christ Jesus. Whatever you need, you don't have to go back to your old way of doing things to get your needs met. All right? A dog goes back to his vomit. You're not a dog. Once you accept Christ, you are a child of the living king. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when you say clean house, work on your mindsets, your the emotions, and even in the natural, he he used both natural and spiritual. There are things we have I, idols, as he said, things yeah. that we worship. Mordecai, yes, he suffered a price briefly. Matter of fact, the price was well. You know, I can't say he suffered a price because I can't say he didn't have no peace. Mm-hmm. He didn't bow down to Mordecai. I'm, I'm sorry, Mordecai didn't bow down to the wicked Haman, and that's how they got into that mess. As far as him sending out decrees to destroy it, Haman sending out this wanting a decree to be sent out to destroy the Jews because he refused to operate in idolatry, and the Lord delivered him. He brought victory. Because of his faithfulness to God and his obedience to the word of God that tells us that we are not to have nobody before God. That's it. Nothing comes from him. We are to love him with our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. We're supposed to love God with everything we have in us. And nothing is supposed to come before him. And so when you talked about idols, it could be anything. Anything that comes before him. Anytime when you feel that nudge to pray and you're not praying. Or you feel that nudge to fast and you're not fasting. Or you feel that nudge to do what's right. Whatever what's right is that the Lord is dealing with you about. And you chose to go in a, doc, a, a different direction. Because whatever you desiring to obtain is more important than what God is calling for. That's idolatry. Is that idolatry, Ruby? That's idolatry. That's, Ruby? That's right. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, I don't know where wine is. I want them to play that other song, Redeem. <laughs> I, I, he, he's here. <laughs> he has walked in the studio. I want I want you to under, truly understand. I pray that this song, Minister to You, Redeem. This is also by youth, uh, Pastor uh, Rudy Wine. Wine is getting that song. I just want you to know that his music is on Where, Sweetie? It's on Facebook at Rudy Lewis. Put at, put it in, in as one word. Um, it's on SoundCloud at Rudy Lewis. And it's on YouTube at Rudy Lewis. R-U-D-Y-L-E-W-I-S. You can find so, me there. And it's on World, it's on uh, Worship Center Radio. Yes, it is. On, thank you for that plug. Yeah. Because I sure forgot. <laughs> And why I said to mention it, we do play his music on Worship Center Radio. His music is also the intro. Is it intro for my uh, new show? No, it's not. It's the intro for something. No. Oh, it was the intro play for inside. How am I going to tell the producer? No. <laughs> when he actually put it together, Lord, help deliver me. <laughs> okay. So, 
according to <laughs> we have a lot of fun up here. Yes, according to wine, it's on one of the end time move of God that me and Prophet Blaine did. So I don't know which one. It's probably last week or something. And you can hear um, Miracle Signs and Wonders. But we're gonna play Redeem right now. I, I just, I just, this is good. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because we want you to know you got victory. The word says, let the redeemed say so. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, Brother Wine is finding it. Okay, back to us until he give us the, it's on. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about Miracle Signs 1. We talked about the victory. We talked about, oh, God is a God of completion. He didn't just start. In the hospital with you. No. But he did a complete transformation. Yeah. He healed you physically. Mm -hmm. He healed you mentally. Mm -hmm. He healed you emotionally. Yeah. Isn't that right? That's right. And so how have your life changed since you experienced this encounter with God? Ever since that experience, um, my life has tremendously went up. I, I, can, I can say... That uh, even after the rehab and all that um, following, I had begun to get involved even more in the music. And I Christian also, music. Yeah, Christian at that. <laughs> yeah, I produced. But a diversity but, of Christian music because right. you're very creative. Yep. You minister to the different genres now. Yep. You can go there. That's right. I do hip-hop, jazz, R&B, techno, EDM, anything uh, we we can go to the 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 craziest kind of sounds. I'll turn it around, and I'll, you'll know that it's anointed. I don't play that. So uh, after that process, I begin to get more involved in the entertainment industry and um, find my way. And it brought me here. Um, I went from producing all my work, uh, going to different places. And the crazy thing is, when you're anointed, I'm, I'm going to share this with you guys. When you're anointed, you shift the atmosphere, like literally shift the atmosphere. I remember going to different studios across Michigan with my mom, and it'll be my first time going. After that studio session, it could be good, it could be bad, it could be okay. After that studio session, for some reason, and I know why, but for some reason, the studio was shut down. Right after we will leave. Wow. Well, this one ain't going to yep. get shut Oh, no, 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 no. Of course. I'm there to say it right of course, now. Of course not. No, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this. It's, it's when you're anointed mm -hmm. and the people are not right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they mess with God uh -oh. and his purpose for his people. And oh. God will not allow his prophets to be harmed. So... With that being said, you touch the prophets and you mess with the prophets and the people, your stuff can be shut down. And that's what happened to the wicked Haman. He was shut down and killed, him and his ten sons. Okay? That. The Bible said, touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. Uh -huh. For those that are tuning in that may not understand what anointing means, it just means the presence of God. That's what it means. It means that his presence rests upon you. And when his presence rests upon you, everything is in his presence. Uh, strength, power, glory, everything is in the presence of God. That's what the anointing is. The Bible said the anointed destroyed the oath. It is his presence. That if that's abiding in you, because the Bible said we abide in him, he abides in us, we can have what we say and it shall be done. So his word is abiding in us, connected with his spirit. His spirit is the anointing, and it comes with everything you need for a life-changing experience. Now, Juan has, has waved at me, the producer's wave. He has signaled. It is on. <laughs> so he's found it. Come on, listen to it. It's going to be good. Redeem. That's right. And then when we come back, Rudy gonna explain what it is. Hard in my own 
songs, yeah. But I ain't looked up, I ain't looked up to the high in the sky. I ain't called God for an answer, and I don't know why, I don't know why. But he came to me today, and he already said, keep my mind focused. You've been running, you've been hiding, you've been asking why, you've been looking for the answers, but you ain't looking up in the sky. You've been lying to yourself like, I got it, I can handle that, but you know what, this God said, he can take it, just give him the stress, just give him the pain, just give him the cry, just give him the hurt. Don't ask why He can take you and make you over He can make all situations go over May you Change you He the man to Go to That's good. That's some good. That's some good stuff. The beat, the words. I feel redeemed. I'm telling you right now. After hearing that, I feel totally redeemed. <laughs> I, I'm telling you. Oh my goodness. The work. Tell me a little bit about the words, because I was really into the groove. So, uh, redeemed. I was just reminding myself who I am and uh, how far I have come. 
even through the process, you know, even through the sins, even through the secret sin, even through the the pain, the disappointments, you know, God has redeemed me and he has made me strong. So I shouldn't act weak. I shouldn't be uh, somewhere I'm not because he has made me as a king, a queen, you know, that that's how we are supposed to be. So it's just reforming. You know, the fact that you are who God made you to be and just be that. You know what? I, I Whoa. Yeah. Wow. That was, wow. Yeah. That was a lot in that. Wow. That was some power there. <laughs> I just want to go back to something. Before we play Redeemed, uh, Prophet Rudy made a comment. Yes, he's a prophet and a pastor, but he made a comment about the studios. I got a clarity near the end. He said, shoot. Mm, the studios was shut down. You cannot mishandle, mistreat God. People and think you're going to get away with something. Uh, yeah. So that's why the studios, the studios had to have shut down because yeah. there was some mishandling going on here. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Or they just weren't right. Because we have found out, you know, some of the, the producers at the place, they were stealing from the companies. And, and I, my God. I mean, God would shut it down just not just for my my covering, but for others' coverings. See, when you go somewhere, you take that anointing, and that anointing brings truth. It brings positivity. It brings correction, and it brings uh, a shield to protect. So, and also it brings deliverance, and uh, and it brings rebuke. light. It yep. brings light. Yep. Light, light shine yep. in darkness, yep. and righteousness. Once it walks in the room, it automatically calls for an alignment. And if it if whatever don't align up with righteousness, will be shut down. Shoot, yep. like that. Just wow. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So you know. So I I just I thank God for being spirit spirit led, spirit filled, and um. I just, I, I'm in awe, you know, with everything that I've been doing because not only have I been doing the music, but I I did modeling from time to time and I was able to start my own logo graphic company and uh, a photography business. Um, coming soon, we're working on the fashion, we're working on more music. I'm signing artists, thank God. I mean, God is really good, you know, so... Uh, to be where I was at 18 and now be 21, in such a short time, I've come such a long way. I've accomplished so much that I have written down. But, you know, still moving forward. And I'm moving forward with the mindset that this is still work. You know, I'm not here to show off. This is still, you know, a purpose that I have to reach. You know, for example, when Esther went through those six, I mean, those 12 months, six, 12 months processes. You're right, because it was two, six where, months of yeah, different things happening. See, where she had went, you know, and I guarantee you through each process, she was getting that confidence of more, you know, excuse me, the confidence that she had seen in her goals were coming to pass. And so instead of her just stopping and saying, oh, this is good right here, I'm ready. Uh, no, she kept going because every step of the way she was able to see a little bit more and gain a little bit more. And when she got to that palace and got with that king, when she got there, she realized all that was preparating her. All those accomplishments were preparating her for this huge purpose. And I'm realizing the huge purpose that I have coming. Miracles, signs, and wonders got me here. So I want you guys to really remember, clean your house, allow God to take you through the processes so that he can take care of you and, and allow God to be him. Don't don't step in the way of that. Follow the process. <laughs> Excuse me. Follow the process and move forward. Count the blessings. Stay humble. Remember that this is just a goal to an accomplishment, an accomplishment to a bigger purpose. Wow. Yeah. You know, that was powerful. 
Now, there are ways to connect with you because you're ministering all the time on social yeah. media. You're the social media minister. Amen. <laughs> I mean, because I see you, words of, of encouragement, enlightenment. You always doing something to help the people to be encouraged and, and give them a, it's a word of encouragement to help them go just a little bit further, just a little bit further. Tell them where yeah. people, tell people where they can find you. Okay. So, I, I don't want you guys because I know a lot of, a lot of people will be like, why these names? So, um, you can find me on Instagram and Snapchat at Mr. Gold Chain. Now, why is it Mr. Gold with Chain? With a Z. Okay, so uh, <laughs> on Instagram, I I was going by my name, Rudy M. Lewis Jr. And um, I love jewelry and I love fashion. So I will Wait wear a, a lot of... I'm sorry. You could be a Christian and wear jewelry and fashion and like fun stuff? Yeah. Wow. Then why are people always saying it's born to be a Christian? What's wrong with them? Uh, because of the religious, traditional ways. Uh, I feel like today's demographic of church, I hate to say it, and I'm saying this loosely, it, it has changed, and it is changing. Now, is it all for the better? No. But what I will say is that today's society of church are going away from traditional things or the ritualistic things, you know, how how to pray, when to pray, you know, all that, to now it's about your relationship with God. And what I can honestly say from my experiences of different sins and different things that I've went through to get here, it took a relationship with God. And according to that, I did have ways that I would practice uh, every day and, and so on and so forth. But according to that, I was able to find me in that process. Now, I am totally about God, praying, reading word, prophesying, speaking truth and everything. But you have to follow that process because if you don't, you will not make it here to this point. So the 12-month the process... Brought her before the king. She got favor. Yeah. And in return, that favor gave a whole <laughs> people, a whole nation, liberty and freedom. There's liberty and freedom in the favor of Jesus Christ. Because he'll give you favor. The Bible said God gave certain people favor with him and man. And in this season, we need favor with God. Amen. Come on now. So I, I'll tell you, be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Don't let nobody tell you you can't dress the way you like to dress. I mean, be appropriate now. Don't right. don't. Because the Bible don't said play. do things decently in and order. in order. Yeah. <laughs> so be appropriate, but also be yourself. You got to know when too much is too much. You ain't gonna catch me Sunday in no beater and some some <laughs> shorts. No, because of the call that I have. I, I sing and I preach and I pastor. So I am not allowed to do that. Now, wait. And also, the word tells you how to come before the king, too. That's right. Okay, so we when we come to service, we come in to do worship before God. Right. And there's a certain way that even the priests, there are certain garments they had to wear. They couldn't just dress any old kind of way That's right. when they were coming before God. So That's we right. need to make sure that we do things in modesty and we make sure. Be yourself, right? Have your fashion, your thing, but we right. don't need to be causing a stumbling block. We got to have our breasts all out and other things too tight. That those can't people even breathe. Are. What in the world is going on here that's right. just of the devil <laughs> that those people are right those people Come are on. and you cannot you cannot blame the next man for their shortcomings so so when you when you do everything do everything in your power to make sure that you're covered so you don't be in the wrong if we just focus on ourselves and sit ourselves sit ourselves in the mercy seat uh, uh, the Beatitudes, for example, that will clearly tell you, you know, what your appearance spiritually and emotionally and mentally should be. Mm -hmm. And I believe if you have that correct, you'll find you in that space where you're, you're clean, you're wholesome, and you're, you're not out there. You're not exposing yourself and you're not embarrassing yourself and you're not stopping the next person, your brother and sister in Christ, from finding God themselves. In the place of worship. Exactly. Now, I'm going to say this. If you somebody that has an emergency, you out and about somewhere, you feel like you're about to kill yourself or do something, 
that you ain't got no business doing. Find yourself in the church. It don't matter about how you look. Prostituting or whatever. Get in the church. Come on now. Find yourself to the house of God. Yeah. We're talking about people that's daily going. Now, right. now eventually. Now that's different. Yeah. yeah. If you if you kind of got to know the Lord, develop a relationship, he automatically will convict you. He'll let yeah. you know what he wants to see you in and I what would, you ain't supposed to be wearing. Yep. Yeah. And and you know what? This is so this is so awesome that you're talking about this because uh the love. What people don't understand is that I, I feel like in youth pastor and what I realized and what I saw by my own eyes, was that different leaders, uh, elders, deacons, all security, all kind of different elected leaders or whatever, they mistreat the youth and, and, and young people. I'm talking about 25 and under. I'm talking about 30 and under young people. And if you want to consider yourself a young adult, fine. So I be consider it. myself. Amen. Now, I may not fall in that bracket. But if I go by the years I've been saved, I amen. think I fall in that bracket. Amen. I'm a youngster. Hey, amen. It's fine. <laughs> it is totally fine. But what I seen was that they don't they don't know, but the the pride of of that that mindset, okay, I have something to do. I have a responsibility. And the pride of that throws people off. Let me explain how. And you, you could tell me if I'm wrong. I want y'all to comment. I want y'all to find somewhere, find us and comment. And let me know, let us know how you feel about what we're talking about today. Please, let us know. Um, what I feel is, and what I saw was that, you know, they mistreat the youth by trying to tell them what they should be doing. But remember, they they come to church. Okay, they come to church. And... When they come to church, they come. They come seeking a word. I, I don't want to be thrown off because I might have on too much jewelry. Oh, okay. And you're you're a usher. Don't say. I mean, I I would love it and appreciate that you not you not say anything to me because the word of the Lord might come in and lovingly convict that issue that I'm dealing with. That's causing me to draw a lot of attention in the wrong way. But when we speak ahead of time, it's like moving before the timing of God. And that can throw a lot of people off. This is this is what I would call, uh, in some cases, an issue. And in other cases, an excuse. Let's stop giving people the room and the issue and even the people that are hurting Let's stop giving them room to stay offended and let's love one another through their shortcomings. Because the Bible says that love of God will change everything. So we have to allow the word of God to be ministered and allow that love to minister to the person so that they can get the word that God has for them. And they can receive it in the way that he is presenting it. But when we step in front of that, we limit them not only from their walk, we limit them from their understanding, we limit them from seeing who they could be in Christ. Because sometimes they get up there and they might realize that uh, that could be me singing and worshiping. So remember who you are. And you can find me on IG at Mr. Gold Chains, M-R-G-O-L-D-C-H-A-I-N-Z. And you can find me on Twitter with Mr. Gold Chains and two Z's at the end. And also on Facebook. Let me yep. tell you something. I'm a, I'm a, I, gotta, I got to say what he's trying to say. Self-righteousness is a hindrance and a stumbling block to somebody else to get into know Christ. In Allow words. them to sit and let the min the ministry of the word of God to do the transformation and not you. Yeah. Because your flesh can cause problems. He also said love. What the Bible said, love, perfect love casts out fear and love covers a multitude of sin. I love the way you put it. This is you, Pastor Rudy, who's also a prophet. Who I love. Yeah. That's my friend. I, I want to minister to the ones that are hurt. Church hurt. You want to pray? Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I I see God moving. And if you would just lift your hands right now. Yes. Ah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for ministering peace 
to their mind, to their heart, to their issues, their church hurts. I thank you for opening this door, allowing me to be the water to that seed that you have planted such a long time ago. And I thank you for uprooting these roots that are hindering this tree to grow in your rivers of water. Father, I ask that you just guide them to the ministry that you need them to be. And I ask that you just touch them right now. And I speak to your spirit. Just release whatever it is. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. And as you inhale and exhale, this last time, think about the issues. Think about the things that were said. Think about the things that they may have tried to stop you in. The things that have hurt you. Even the parents. The parents that have raised you and it caused you to, to feel like you hate church. To cause you to feel like you don't want to go to church because they have forced it down your throat. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we touch this situation and we ask that you just uproot it. I thank you for a new ministry. I thank you for the prophet. I thank you for the prophetess. I thank you for the event I thank you for the missionary. I thank you for the pastors. I thank you for the end time ministers right here, the street prophets. I thank you for the youth pastors that are listening right now. I thank you for the singers. I thank you for the writers. I thank you for the security guards. I thank you for the executives, the officials. I thank you for the government people and i ask that you just minister to them right now touch their heart god do this miracle work do this sign work and do this wondrous work in jesus name i pray amen amen this has been dr Ru ah, dr rudy <laughs> this has been dr rhoda you pastor rudy check them out we've given you all the information please share 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 also don't forget to stop by wpk ministry dot or. All right. So this has been the Esther Project. Thank you for joining us. We've had a wonderful time these three days. And we look forward to bringing more wonderful program to you. Don't forget, if you got a gift, you want to donate, this is the season to do it. Stop by worshipcenterradio.net or drrotabird.com. The money goes back into the programs. We want to support our youth. We love you. Have a great one.